Darth Vader. If only you could be so bold. The Imperial Senate will not still for this. This is the first time we learn that there's actually an Imperial Senate, yet somewhat ironically, it's going to be dissolved in the next day or two. We also get introduced to Darth Vader by name, and it implies that Leia and Vader have actually met before, because she is clearly not intimidated by him. When they hear you've attacked a diplomat... Don't act so surprised, Your Highness. You weren't on any mercy mission this time. Several transmissions were beamed to the ship by rebel spies. The first part of Vader's line implies that Leia has been on emergency missions before, possibly along the same lines as the Red Cross or even Amnesty International, where she travels to planets and systems, helping those cultures and beings who've had a hard time of it under Imperial rule. In addition, what this line tells us is that her ship has been intercepted before, but the Imperials have had to let her go. Whether this has occurred once or many times is unclear, but what it does show is that diplomatic immunity has got her out of a few scrapes. I want to know what happened to the plans they sent you. As we learned from Rogue One, this statement about the plans being beamed to the ship is not entirely correct. Sure, there was a transmission sent from the base on Scarif to the fleet in space, but there was only one transmission and not several, and of course the plans were handed over to the crew of the Tanti-4 in the equivalent of a floppy disk, which then ended up inside R2-D2. At the very least, you would think that Leia would be more concerned about Vader asking the obvious question, why was Tatooine her intended destination? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a member of the Imperial Senate on a diplomatic mission to Alderaan. The problem with this statement is that Leia is taking Vader as being an idiot, because he knows as well as she that she's not telling the truth. Unfortunately, she has no alternative but to maintain the charade, even though she's been caught red-handed. If Vader really wanted to catch her out, he could do so by asking a very simple question. If Alderaan was her destination, why was she going the wrong way? Tatooine is part of the Outer Rim, whilst Alderaan is part of the Core Worlds. Effectively, they're nowhere near each other. Needless to say, in 1977, when this sequence first appeared on screen, it carried a lot more weight and gravity. However, these days, this line is completely defunct, as we know that the Star Destroyer Devastator has just chased the Tanti-4 from the Battle of Scarif. You are part of a rebel alliance and a traitor. Take her away! As noted previously, the fact the ship has just come from the Battle of Scarif makes this line a bit of a no-brainer. Yet to be fair to Vader, he has no physical proof that she's actually with the Alliance. After all, members of the crew may have taken possession of the Death Star plans without her knowledge, so you can understand his frustration. It's also interesting to note that Vader chooses to have Leia arrested rather than interrogating her right there and then, as he did with Captain Antilles. Holding her is dangerous. Word of this gets out, it could generate sympathy for the Rebellion in the Senate. Because we are not familiar with Vader's character at the moment, this discussion doesn't seem out of place, yet in later films we know that Imperial officers would never question Vader's judgement like this. One thing this line does tell us is that the Senate is still important for governing the galaxy, even if it is withering away. Though as we know, the Senate will be dissolved in the next day or two, with all the power being given to the regional governors. It's interesting to note that the fledgling alliance has been making major inroads in getting their voice heard in the upper echelons of government. Even General Tag mentions in the Death Star conference room later on how support for the Alliance is growing. So if news was to reach the Senate that the Empire had attacked a diplomatic ship, it would cause a huge political uproar, not to mention a massive PR disaster. I have traced the rebel spies to her. Now she is my only link to finding their secret base. This is an interesting line because it's not made clear what spies we are referring to. The concept of a spy is someone who works for the Empire, but is secretly feeding information to the Alliance. Currently, the best on-screen example we have of a genuine rebel spy is ISB Commander Lonnie Jung, as seen in Andor, followed later on by Callus and Rebels. She'll die before she'll tell you anything. Indeed, she would give her life for the cause, and as we learn later, even her home planet. Even the killing of Captain Antilles isn't enough to persuade her, although it's quite possible she doesn't know he's dead. Leave that to me. This line can be interpreted in that Vader really doesn't know how he's going to get the information from Leia, but he'll work it out later when he has more time. This is possibly why a period of time elapses between her arrest and her interrogation on the Death Star. Send a distress signal, and then inform the Senate that all aboard were killed. And now begins the cover-up. Even the mighty Imperial Empire, with all their power and authority, still has to make this look like an accident. Somewhat ironically, the destruction of the Tan-T-4 and the death of Princess Leia would have made front page holonet news, up until the destruction of Alderaan was reported a couple of days later. 
It's also likely that the survivors on the ship would be either executed or sent to a prison somewhere, possibly even Nakina 5, never to be heard from again. It's also interesting to note that getting one of these people to reveal the location of the rebel base on Yavin 4 would be far easier than getting Leia to admit it. So logically, you would think that Vader would interrogate these people first. Either way, it's not going to end well for them. Lord Vader, the battle station plans are not aboard this ship, and no transmissions were made. An escape pod was jettisoned during the fighting, but no life forms were aboard. We know from an earlier scene that escape pods were launched and they were shot down. Interestingly, if the escape pod carrying R2 and 3PO was destroyed, it would make for a fantastic what-if scenario. Ironically though, Leia would actually have no idea what happened to the Death Star plans because she wouldn't have been aware of R2's fate. Still, with the Tan-T4 destroyed, the crew killed, Leia captured, all the escape pods accounted for, despite the missing plans, the Empire would consider this to be a very successful mission. It's also worth noting, this is the first time we hear Darth Vader being addressed as Lord. She must have hidden the plans in the escape pod. And in just two lines of dialogue, these guys have got the entire situation figured out. Set a detachment down to retrieve them. See to it personally, Commander. This has prompted the age-old question as to why Vader didn't go down to the planet himself to retrieve the plans. After all, it was a pretty important mission. The theory that most fans have adopted is that for Vader, the planet holds a lot of bad memories, so he tries to avoid it whenever possible. Yet there's a more logical reason as to why Vader didn't go to Tatooine. Between chasing the plans and interrogating Leia, he clearly went with the more important option of the two. As we learn later in the Death Star conference room, he feels that finding the plans to the technological terror was a secondary consideration next to finding the Rebel secret base. There will be no one to stop us this time. This is an interesting line, because you have to wonder who stopped them last time. Perhaps with all the political unrest in the galaxy, Vader has constantly found himself hindered by all the government and political interference. It's worth noting that when A New Hope was produced, Vader was effectively a subordinate to the Imperial hierarchy. This is evidenced by the way that Moti speaks to him in the Death Star conference room and the way Tarkin controls him. Yet this is vastly different to the authority he shows in both movies and TV shows that were produced after A New Hope, yet are set in the Imperial era. Many of the details discussed in these studies are often expanded upon in comics, books and other literary works created after the film's release. Although we will endeavour to reference these works wherever possible, our focus remains committed to what we see on the screen.